I hope you guys have been enjoying the morning session. Check, check. There we go. I hope you guys have been enjoying the morning session. Here to close it out before a short intermission is someone that I think we probably all owe a debt of gratitude to for helping us understand the history of money, fiat money, and why a Bitcoin, Bitcoin is ascending as the future dominant global monetary standard. Please help me in welcoming to the stage the author of the new book, The Fiat Standard, and the classic, The Bitcoin Standard, Mr. Saifdeen Amous. Thanks, my man. Cheers, thanks, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for being here for my talk. We always hear fiat people complain about the high cost of Bitcoin. Bitcoin takes up too much electricity. Well, what about the cost of fiat? Not a lot of people ask that question because they're just used to it. They think it's just costless, you know, it's provided by government. But it does have a cost. Now, to be clear, the cost of fiat is not like the cost of Bitcoin. It's not in terms of its electricity where you really find the true cost of fiat. It's true that there's a lot of electricity that's being spent to operate the fiat system, but all of that really, in terms of the consequences of fiat, when you compare the cost of running it to the cost of the consequences of running it, the cost of the electricity to run it really rounds down to zero. The costs of fiat are elsewhere. They are in the catastrophes that, it's cre that it creates for its users. So, the first obvious and most important cost of fiat is inflation. Annually, fiat money experiences a dilution of about 14%. That's the average over the past 60 years. If you look at the data from 1960 until today, it goes up roughly around 14% per year in terms of the total market supply. So the average fiat user experiences a dilution of their stake in fiat money by 14% per year. The total global money supply is roughly $100 trillion. So we're losing roughly the market value of around $14 trillion a year in current terms, which is, since global wealth is $400 trillion, this is 3.5% of global wealth. So the cost of fiat is roughly 3.5% of all human wealth. And that goes to finance governments and wars and monopoly bankers. But not only is this a very high cost, I think the point that many people miss is that the cost of inflation is a very highly regressive tax. The rich are able to protect themselves by buying hard assets which benefit from inflation. The poor are the ones who hold the majority of their wealth in either cash or basic saving accounts. Those are the people who can't afford to buy a lot of uh, real estate or hard assets or get into the stock market. They don't have financial access. They're the ones who host most of their wealth in cash balances. And they're the ones who suffer the most from this. And now, unsurprisingly, all the people in the fiat world who are paid by fiat money and are constantly going on about inequality fail to mention how this exacerbates inequality all over the world. But of course, it doesn't just stop there. Now, you could say, well, this is a lot of money, but it goes to finance government. The government does good things, right? No, government doesn't really do good things with the money that it gets. Government is basically just central planning. Government distorts and destroys everything it touches. There's nothing that humanity can't provide voluntarily. Anything that requires a gun to be put to people's head in order for it to be provided likely isn't needed or it would be provided much better if people didn't have guns in their heads. So the world would be better off if the people who benefit from fiat just took their money and bought gold with it and got rich from it. But unfortunately, the real cost is that they actually spend it and they try and do good, thi good things with it, but the consequences are usually terrible. So the value of your money is declining. So your ability to buy essentials is declining. And government has the purchasing power that it takes from you, which it spends on convincing you that you should give up on the essentials that you need to live a decent life and that that is actually for the good of the earth and for your health. And so all of the ancestors' food that all of your ancestors have eaten all throughout history is now considered bad for you. You need to eat industrial waste because that's the correct way that 
fiat finance scientists conclude. And similarly, we see the distortion in the energy market where they're trying to force people to use pre-industrial technologies. We no longer have a Concord and we're being primed to think with fiat money. You know, fiat scientists are telling us that windmills, a sixth century technology, is what is going to be needed for the future. This is just inflation cover-up. This is inflation laundering. They're trying to make you live like a peasant and think that that's better because, you know, it saves the planet or saves the oceans from boiling or whatever. And it doesn't stop there. Economic distortions caused by fiat are extensive. The fact that our money is devaluing roughly by about 14% per year means it's very hard for people to save for their future. And if they can't save for the future, they, be, they start discounting the future more. The future becomes more uncertain. And so we see time preference rises. And this is a topic I discuss in both my books, the Bitcoin standard and the fiat standard. The degree to which we discount the future declines or increases. Our discounting of the future declines. And the valuation we attach to the future declines, the less our money is able to save its value and hold on to its value to the future. We discount the future more, and so we see this reflected in all kinds of uh, ways in which people behave, not just financially and economically, but in all kinds of ways. And similarly, the uh, central planning of the money supply by governments creates business cycles. The entire business cycle is caused by the manipulation of interest rates. And of course, it's destroying capital. It makes people invest in negative yielding businesses, businesses that yield a negative return in real terms because they seem to be yielding a positive return in nominal terms, and that's better than holding on to fiat. And then, finally, this econo major economic distortion is that we have a global system of partial barter. You can't just buy things with money internationally. You have to buy different countries different currencies for different countries, which is highly inconvenient. And the fourth and the most disastrous cost of fiat is in the cost of conflicts it creates. Under hard money, under money that is not controlled by government, governments could only fight until they ran out of their own money. Under fiat, governments can fight until their entire population runs out of wealth saved in money. So with fiat money, governments can continue to fight until they destroy the entire wealth of their society. It's not just their wealth. And that contributed to making wars under the fiat standard far longer and far more deadly. And it contributed to making governments far more deadly and far more powerful. Governments murdered 169 million people in the fiat century. They're by far the most dangerous thing on the world, uh, by far more dangerous than any animal or natural disaster. And all the greatest tyrants of all the biggest tyrants in history ran on fiat money because it allowed them to finance doing all kinds of insane and criminal uh, nonsense. And another point that is very important about fiat is not just that it finances war, it also raises the stakes of war enormously. It makes the reward for winning war much bigger, both domestically and internationally. The people who get to control the money supply get to control a lot, and so the stake of war under a fiat standard becomes much, much higher. So this is how we can understand the cost of fiat. It's not in the electricity that it uses. And this is why we can understand why Bitcoin consumes a lot of electricity. It's a far more advanced technological way of performing the functions of money that leaves it immune to interference by the government and therefore prevents us from paying all the heavy costs of fiat that come from government control of money. And so, in the same way that washing machines consume more electricity than washing with your hands, everybody who has a chance to buy a washing machine chooses to buy one because it's far more convenient. And in the same way that cars consume more energy than walking or bicycles, a lot of people prefer to have cars because they're far more mobile. You cross the ocean with an airplane because it's a much better technology for doing it than if you try to do it with a kayak in the sea, even though the, ki sorry, even though the kayak consumes a lot less energy. This is how life improves. This is how our quality of life improves. We expend more energy on making things without having to rely on human fallibility. We increase the productivity of our machines, increasing our productivity, allowing us to perform these jobs much more reliably and with far less negative downsides and consequences. That's why we have computers, that's why we have pipes. And Bitcoin is just another machine like these machines. Yes, it consumes a lot more electricity because it saves on a lot of other very, very, very high costs. 
That is basically the topic of my uh, latest book, The Fiat Standard, which you can pick up in the bazaar, in the Bitcoin bazaar in the uh, back area over there. I'm going to be selling copies of the book and signing them. And also you can take a course on my website that starts this week on safedean.com based on The Fiat Standard. Thank you very much. Read the fiat standard and don't sell your Bitcoin. Those are my two takeaways from Saifedina Moose, author of the Bitcoin and fiat standard. We are here on the Marathon Desk hosted by Bitcoin Magazine, live at the Bitcoin conference in Miami. I'm Natalie Brunel. This is Dave Portnoy, Ben Askren, Alex McShane. What an amazing speech. I mentioned earlier, this guy got me into Bitcoin, converted me to Bitcoin. Now I have a career in Bitcoin. Dave, what do you think of his talk? It was interesting. I mean, all the Bitcoin is very pro Bitcoin, and I have to read the book. I haven't read the book. You haven't read Bitcoin? No, or you you guys read it. I will say it's the first time Whoa. you guys clapped after a presentation. Yeah. Well, I will say someone he's tried to come up and shitcoin Dave, and he didn't allow it. So no, he's becoming exactly. more of a Bitcoin maxi. Not only did he try live. to shitcoin me, it was a shitcoin that has cost me 40 grand. That's so right. it wasn't just any shitcoin, it was my shitcoin. He's not lying. I saw his account. It's it's oh, it's gone a, down heavily from uh from what, a certain alt point I won't mention. To, what's forty grand to two grand? <laughs> As Safe Dean would say those are high <laughs> time preference investments. Right? Yeah, he told us I he, he told us with the Bitcoin standard we gotta get away from these, taught us about low time preference money and the fiat standard is introducing low time preference lifestyles, right? Yeah. You gotta get your health right. Got to get your facts right. Got to invest time in yourself. I think the most important thing that he said, and I was, I, um, Natalie, you said it was Jason Lowry, but yeah. the actual cost kinetic. of war. Kinetic where, war. <laughs> kinetic war. <laughs> where they could just print money. They could do as much war as they want. Yeah. Not like hundreds of years ago when they had to print bonds to fund wars. And then people were like, wait, what's this shit I'm paying for? I don't want to go to Afghanistan or wherever. Yeah. You know, like, let's not pay for it. How I about know. that? He dropped yeah. some scary statistics on yes. us, right? Like 169 million people killed under fiat. Yeah. All of these these leaders like Hitler that were empowered by fiat and corruption. And then he yeah. pointed out also 14% inflation. It's not the CPI like they tell us, right? Yeah, and CPI I think- CPI is a lie. I think <laughs> CPI is a lie. I think the takeaway there is also just these fiat governments have been so pervasive that none of us even knew growing up that we had an option, right? Yeah. Fiat means by decree, this money has been forced upon yeah. us. You mm -hmm. see what it does. And yes. in response, we're taking Bitcoin and we're gonna have a user activated soft fork of the legacy financial system. Yeah, and that's what I like. You know, he points out the fact that we're coerced into fiat, yeah. whereas Bitcoin, we can like opt out onto this life raft pretty much because you're right. Most people save in cash. My family immigrant background, like they fled communism. They only ever saved in cash and it, they have suffered because of it. They lost everything in the financial crash because they didn't know how to, you know, outgame the system and the system's so broken. Mm -hmm. And he points out how, you know, Bitcoin through sound hard money can hopefully fix that. But how many of you knew what hard sound money was before you learned about Bitcoin? Not me. Yeah, well, that's why that stat, it's like Bitcoin's only been around for so long. So every war was financed on, yeah. you know, fiat. Yeah, and you were mentioning, I mean, as your business grew, right? You had to figure out places to put your money so that you could see the value in the future, right? 100%. You want to be safe. I mean, I, I have Bitcoin. I have normal money. I have real estate. So at this point, I mean, I don't know. You guys may be all Bitcoin. I wouldn't recommend that either. I mean, what are you guys looking forward to to the rest of the conference? I know this is your first. This is probably what? How many for you guys? Uh, this is my first also. I oh, want to really? come last year and make it. I want Jack Mellers. Jack Mellers better announce something freaking good. We're looking at you for Apple. Apple. Shout out Parabolic Guy. Too scared to come, I heard. Parabolic Guy was too scared to show <laughs> up. Yeah, sad. Jack may or may not have previewed a little bit of his uh, his big announcement on my podcast, and it's awesome. He, well, by what the way, is like, it, Natalie? Explore. Give us I, the juice. I can't say. You're going to have to tune in. You're going to have to watch the Marathon uh, Desk. By the way, subscribe to this channel. Like this video so other people see it. Join us in Miami next year. Why are you sitting at home? There's like a huge crowd behind these cameras. It's <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, by the way. I've been joined by Dave Portnoy, Ben. Ben Askren, Alex McShane, and we're going to take an intermission, but we're going to go to the Bitcoin mining stage. So check that out. And we'll be back here on the Marathon on Live Desk in an hour. So yeah. come back. So many Bitcoin topics, so many cool people, way cooler than me. And we'll be back.